I'm Tom Giannotti, attorney with Butler Law Firm. I'm here today to talk about subrogation, which um, if you don't have any background in law or insurance, um, you may not have heard of this term before. Um, even if you have, you, you may not understand how it works or why it matters. Um, and even lawyers and judges have, have wrestled with uh, these concepts, uh, subrogation and reimbursement. Uh, they're not always uh, our clear answers. So um, I'm here to try and break down some of this in, um, in the context of wrongful death cases. Um, so subrogation or reimbursement in wrongful death cases is a bit different from uh, other types of personal injury cases. Um, in cases where the injured victim is still alive, um, that person is responsible for their own medical bills. Um, but when somebody has fortunately passed away, uh, that person's debts are um, actually part of his or her estate. Um, and since the uh, decedent uh, is no longer with us, whoever is uh, the executor or administrator of their estate is in charge of sorting out any debts along with the assets of the uh, decedent. And we're often asked by family members who we represent in a wrongful death case, do I have to pay these medical bills? Um, and the short answer is no, you personally uh, do not. But depending on the specifics of the case, the estate may have to. So um, here's sort of the longer answer. Um, and first, uh, it's important to have some background about you know, again, how wrongful death cases are different from personal injury cases. Um, and in wrongful death cases, there are two types of claims that the uh, next of kin, the wrongful death claimant, can bring. Uh, that's the estate claim and wrongful death claim. And I've illustrated those two here as uh, crudely drawn buckets, that's what they're supposed to be, uh, is two different buckets, right? So you have, on one hand, the uh, claim for uh, the full value of the decedent's life, which is measured from the decedent's perspective, uh, and that's the wrongful death claim. We also have a separate claim, a uh, separate bucket, if you will, and that is the medical bills and other things um, like pain and suffering and funeral and burial expenses um, out of, of the decedent, and that's all in this bucket, the estate bucket. So it's basically up to the claimant and his or her lawyer to decide what claims to bring. Um, they may decide to only bring one but not the other, um, basically putting all the money in one bucket and, and not the other. Um, before we get into why that is, um, just some more quick background, um, again, on how wrongful death cases differ. Uh, so in an ordinary or regular sort of personal injury case, um, let's say somebody's hurt in a car accident and they go to the hospital and um, they've got health insurance and um, they get a settlement for, let's say, um, there's only $50,000 of, of um, available um, insurance to cover their, their claim. So um, they're having to look at, well, I owe this much to, there's a hospital lien filed and um, my health insurance has paid this much and they're seeking, me, seeking reimbursement for a portion of that. Um, do I have to pay that? Um, and that's sort of a separate topic than wrongful death. Um, but just without getting into the weeds on this, basically when you have available, when you have, uh, limited insurance uh, proceeds like that are not enough to fully compensate the injured person, Georgia law says the person has, quote, not been made whole. Um, in other words, it's, it's um, again, not enough to, to compensate them for their medical bills, their pain and suffering, attorney's fees, et cetera. Um, so when that's the case, Georgia law says that you may not have an obligation to repay that um, full amount of what the health insurance company or medical provider, uh, hospital, et cetera, is seeking. Um, Oftentimes, those folks will agree to pay back some reduced amount, or they may just acknowledge that um, that there is no obligation because that's the law. Um, but in other cases, uh, that Georgia state law does not really matter because um, their their federal law may apply. For example, if Medicare uh, paid for some of the treatment, or if your health insurance is what we call a self-funded ERISA plan, as is often but not always the case with uh, health insurance that's through an employer. Um, and that's because often these 
types of health insurance plans are governed by federal law, which uh, supersedes or preempts state law. So that, um, what we call the made whole rule in Georgia, um, may apply in, in some cases, but not others. So with that background in mind, again, let's turn to um, how wrongful death subrogation works. So in wrongful death cases, similarly, um, if, the if the decedent had uh, Medicare or one of those um, federal uh, insurance plans, the uh, estate, again, this bucket, um, may have to pay back some of what the Medicare or the insurance company paid on behalf of their deceased relative um, and try and save that person's life, basically, on account of an injury. Um, I say may because it depends, again, on the specifics of the case, but the point is these are Medicare and these federal uh, ERISA plans. These are basically exceptions to the general rule, which is this. In wrongful death cases, uh, if the Georgia state law applies, and we're not necessarily talking about made whole, we're also talking about um, how Georgia law, so this, uh, these two buckets, treats wrongful death. Um, in other words, this is a creation of Georgia state law. This is by statute, and there's case law that interprets it. Um, two separate buckets. That's a state law thing. Okay, so um, if, the, uh, if that applies uh, under Georgia law, the uh, wrongful death beneficiary, the family member bringing this claim for the full value of the decedent's life, does not have to pay back the medical bills that are part of this separate bucket. In other words, if you bring a wrongful death claim for the full value of this person's life, um, and that's it, and you don't bring an estate claim, um, then there's the, that family member, not just personally, but just out of the proceeds, under Georgia law does not have to pay back those bills because they're a separate bucket. Um, and for a long time, uh, lawyers in Georgia have intentionally basically allocated when you're, when you're negotiating uh, with, say, an insurance company that there's, again, limited insurance um, limits, and they're trying to secure a meaningful recovery for their client. Um, otherwise, it just wouldn't make sense to even bring the claim in the first place. Um, have, again, you're chosen to bring the wrongful death claim, but not the estate claim. Or, and again, in settlement negotiations, may negotiate uh, for an allocation and say, well, we're going to allocate 100% or 90%, um, all or almost all settlement funds to this bucket, the wrongful death bucket. Um, it, again, to avoid burdening their client with medical bills uh, where there's limited uh, proceeds or for insurance. And um, again, we're talking about the value of the human life. I mean, no amount of money is going to make a person truly whole, of course. Um, and, and oftentimes the medical bills alone may even exceed the available insurance limits, and it wouldn't make sense to bring this bucket claim, right? You know, if you're not going to bring a claim for the medical expenses, if um, it's just going to be wiped away from having to pay back the insurance company. Um, but it, Georgia law provides for uh, a right of action for wrongful death. So you can actually choose to bring just this claim. However, um, that is when you have a uh, a creature of state law, right? So you have, um, let's say you have a regular old medical bill, right? Or a hospital lien, when the hospital goes and files a, a lien against um, any recovery in the case, um, or a health insurance plan that's governed by state law, in other words, not uh, an ERISA plan or Medicare, um, et cetera, then the answer to our question is no, nothing has to be paid back. Um, but, and the plan is one of those special types you mentioned that's governed by federal law, the answer is maybe, and it's best to consult with a lawyer, um, because again, this is, uh, depends on the case, but uh, bottom line is, it's best to consult with uh, a knowledgeable and experienced wrongful death attorney, like ourselves, of course, um, because you, if you were to bring a claim for the wrong type of claim, then it's possible that um, any recovery you get could be subject to claims by uh, medical provider, providers, et cetera, um, and, and basically wash away what otherwise would be um, the, the full available recovery. So 
I hope this has been helpful and informative. Uh, it is a fairly complicated subject, um, so just please don't try this at home. Uh, contact us, or uh, uh, you can call us at 678-940-1444, or by going online to butlerfirm.com. Thank you for watching.